Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking episode 2 of season 3 of Legends of Tomorrow called Freak Show. And uh, all in all, I really wasn't quite feeling it with this episode. A lot of it being just chalked up to the characters acting stupid and the threat feeling pretty, pretty low key. But anyway, let, let's kind of get right into it. Now, I thought the strongest stuff this episode was the stuff that was going on with Nate and Amaya. Uh, Nate is obviously still hurting from her leaving him, and I mean, it's presented here that this was done in a pretty, pretty rough way, intentionally too, so you can understand why he's having a hard time getting over it. Um, but it also does sort of bring into focus that Mar, Maya, Marty does have good, um, no, Amaya has good reasons to kind of like, hey, I have to kind of get back on track with my destiny because my granddaughter is this really amazing superhero. Which is kind of one of those things that they've really sort of let push, let get pushed to the side, I think, a little too much. That, you know, this can't go on forever. And, uh, you know, the real sincerity with which she talks about Mari and... Um, why it is important for her to kind of get Destiny back on track is very well done. And I do sort of like the, the, the situation where uh, she sort of doesn't feel in control, where she's not in control anymore. It's really more the animal spirits that are controlling her rather than the other way around. And it certainly does make what happened to the soldiers in the last episode, which um, was pretty horrific. I mean, granted, they were kind of asking for it, but still, it's sort of when the enemy is running away and is terrified, you know, deliberately hunting them down to kill them, well, that's a little ambiguous at best. <clears throat> but really, it's like the main crux of all of this is basically the legends going out and basically proving Rip right that they're a bunch of screw ups. And they went from what was a fairly minor incident to basically turning it into almost a catastrophe and basically getting pwned by uh, a circus ringmaster and a couple of, you know, basically thugs in silly costumes. I mean, granted, there are reasons why Ray and Jax can't really do anything, but again, most of this is caused by Nate being a complete moron and babbling about their powers while drunk. And, you know, never mind the fact that, well, what exactly is to stop them from, you know, once they have a minute where they... I mean, seriously, there's no way that Barnum can possibly think that this is going to last. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, you can't just be pointing a gun at somebody every minute of the day. Uh, uh, just, yeah, yeah, this is dumb. Uh, now, we should know that um, we've got Billy Zane and um, Victor Garber. I blanked on his name for a moment. We're both actually in Titanic. So them sort of making a little nod to that in this episode, that was pretty cute. And it is pretty cool that they did get Billy Zane to come on the show. Um, nothing really particular to say about what was going on with Sarah and her conflict with Agent Sharp, although I did like that sort of moment during the door. They said, like, you know what, let's take a break and, like, have some water. And they actually just kind of chill and talk to each other. Uh, that was nicely done. Uh, it actually reminded me of um, a thing I read in this book series, uh, called uh, the Belisarius series. It's a fictional series, actually a sci-fi series, but its uh, main character is this famous Byzantine general. And uh, long story short is there's this uh, thing where these two famous warriors square off against each other in this duel. And the du duel goes on for hours. But the story sort of notes, it's like, okay, there's just no way that, that these guys can just constantly be fighting each other for hours on end. You know, there is going to be a moment where they're going to have to, like, take a break, go get something to drink, and... Uh, actually you know take a leak and then you know once they've rested they go right back up at it, at it again and you know you do hear these stories and myths and legends about like characters who fight each other and the battle goes on for days non-stop and it's just the story is pointing out like well you know that makes it all for a very nice story and all but of course it's completely unrealistic and dumb because that's just not humanly possible um anyway um i do I did enjoy that fight, and it did do a nice job of uh, humanizing Agent Sharp quite a bit, but again, her criticism that the Legends are a bunch of screw-ups is just 
nothing but validated by this episode. They took what was incident that was like a level one, just a kind of a minor little thing, and because of their own stupidity, it just becomes this enormous crisis. Now, granted, the time period was not without its flaws. I mean, it's like who in the world gave a job to a guy like Gary? But still. Um, and then, then at the very end, they have this moment where they're like, oh, you know, we've beaten Vandal Savage. We've beaten the Legion of Doom. Uh, you know, how, how bad could this thing that the Time Agency is worried about possibly be? And then they literally laugh their heads over. It's like, oh, man, we've got this in the bag if we ever have to deal with it. Which is just like, oh, really? Really? I mean, if this is something that, you know, people that work for RIP are worried about, maybe you should be taking this a little bit more seriously. And, you know, this is kind of one of the things that's, I mean, yes, we've always, I've always kind of been, uh, you know, kind of a little unhappy with the way sometimes the, the legends don't really take what they're doing very seriously and make a lot of dumb decisions. But, you know, that's, the latter's kind of a given. You know, characters have to make bad choices sometimes. Otherwise, the, there's no drama if everybody always makes the correct and wise decision. But there's a difference between making a bad decision for a compelling story reason and then making a bad decision just because you're an idiot. And too often the show relies on the characters acting just like idiots who don't take anything can't take anything seriously that they should take seriously. Just... Yeah. So, again, this episode just really seems to reinforce that the Time Agency is right to be very critical of the Legends, to put it mildly. But, nonetheless, we've got Mari back on, um, Amaya back on the team, and uh, we kind of see this agent of Malice, whoever that person is, the resurrecting uh, Vixen's sister, or evil sister, from the animated series. Um, the first season I have watched, I uh, actually forgot about the second animated series and never sat down and watched it, but I know who the character is. So this kind of just says, like, okay, this person can bring people back from the dead. This is serious. So it will certainly be interesting to see what's going on there, and also kind of uh, sets up, it looks like we're dealing with somebody who has magical abilities, which is not something anybody on the Legends really has, but beyond Amaya, but she's certainly not a spellcaster or anything like that. She's just somebody who uses a magic item. So it will certainly be interesting to see how that all plays out. Um, yeah, we're uh, just going to leave it here, guys. As always, thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, please uh, comment, rate, subscribe, and of course you can join me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi and on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Until next time, take care and have a good one.